And I will say um, one other thing just before Jason, you go ahead, is that we used to be in the habit of posting um, these meetings, these recordings on YouTube, and we need to that we need to do that again so the community at large can can see them. We need to get on that. So you have our committee. Yeah, I um, I wish I could have um, come uh, last month, and I did look on the website to see if it was posted, so, so I could review it, but I didn't see it there. But we have um, a recording, and we will we do have that recorded, and we will put it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I didn't have any specific ideas about scope about scope broader than that. I just wondered if some of the issues about um, sort of what is the mm, idea, ideal might be putting it strongly, but what do people want in terms of a balance of uses in the neighborhood or particular areas that are where we're gonna, you know, where we would be targeting housing versus other uses yeah. or, or, or areas where we might not be targeting housing. I don't know if anybody's, if that was part of the discussion sort of. I mean, to me, yes. I mean, you know, you you can't really do any sort of community plan if you don't talk about areas where you do and don't want housing. Yeah. Um, Could you and, summarize what you, what you said before the recording started so when it's posted, people know what we're talking about? Yeah, now I have to remember when we started recording. But uh, all right, very quickly, Ronnie, um, we had a uh, really good session last week or last month, excuse me, which will also be available uh, when we post with Patrick Kennedy, who is a very experienced developer who's worked in Berkeley, Oakland, and San Francisco, and kind of at the same scale that our neighborhood is. And we talked about a bunch of possible places to build housing and some of the inherent difficulties and possibilities. And, and Patrick thought that Rockridge, even though generally in the inner Bay Area, you can't really build housing right now because it's just economically infeasible, that in Rockridge, there was a shot at it largely because it costs the same to build housing in Rockbridge as anywhere else, but it's you can you can command higher rents here because of the desirability of the neighborhood. And so that makes the economic equation just a little easier. So that's pretty much where we left it off. And then we are now talking about the idea of doing some kind of very simple community plan to sort of express our desires about what we would like to see happen. I and think so a, who's the target audience for this simple plan? Like, are we trying to attract a particular type of interest to what the community wants so and a way to I, provide support for that? Or I would like to hear other people's uh, thoughts. I will give you my thoughts. And I will say to start with that when Patrick got on the call with us uh, last week, one of the first things he said when he introduced us and he gave his background is he said he's built housing all over the place in his years, and he's been doing this for a long time, right? And um, But never in Rockridge, because he knew how easily the community could and would fight the housing off, and he didn't want to go there, and that he was surprised to be invited. And so my point being, if this community is really going to welcome housing, doing a plan like this would be a signal to a developer who's on the fence, like a developer who looks at it and says, no, nah, I have no interest in rockers. They're not gonna come because we do a plan. But a developer who's like, maybe, but I don't know, does the community want it? Do they not want it? You know, that's that's who we could get over the fence. So that's one audience. Another would be the city to try to get some resources from the city. Um, I'm not sure who the other audiences would be. I think that's worthy of discussion. What do other people think? I would think that the city would be the, the main audience because we're sort of a lobbying organization on some level. I think they're an audience. I actually, for what it's worth, think the development community is maybe a slightly more important audience than the city, but it doesn't really matter. We can have more than one audience. Well, I think the audience is, of course, people in the neighborhood, so. Okay, well, I guess we, and elaborate on that. Well, I, I well, the, a preliminary point I was going to make is I think we need to prepare some a simple material in terms of what the zoning now is in the neighborhood, what's permissible. We might want to go back a little historically, because I think there was a, you know, 30, 40 years ago, Rockridge Community Planning Council came together to have some a specific plan for Rockridge, which did affect, uh, I think, the zoning on College Avenue, if I remember correctly, is, and, and different height city? limits actually complete a specific plan back in that day? Well, I don't know if it was formally a specific plan, but there is something that was very 
designated. That was a rallying point for the original organization. Okay. Fearful about what kind of development might develop okay. after the BART and freeway development. I see. Uh, Annetta probably will remember all that better. But I think we do have to do a, a preliminary paper just laying out very simply. I don't think we have to get in details. These are different times now. And I think uh, the message hasn't gone out there yet that there is much more receptability, receptivity to, to uh, more dense housing in Rockridge than people might have anticipated 10, 15, 20 years ago. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that people are going to be in favor of large towers and things right. of that sort. But in terms of the five to seven or eight story buildings, there's probably more receptivity for certain sites we have, uh, although there are few of them, uh, than there might have been uh, at another period of time. So, so I, I think we need a document that very simply lays out some history and, and some of the existing constraints or opportunities under the current zoning plan and current state law that favors uh, more housing than once was favored. And uh, and then we can go from there in terms of trying to list more uh, neighborhood input into what we would like to see as part of it, including uh, the uh, additional uses to whatever might be the, uh, which I still think has to be the primary emphasis, emphasis on, on housing and affordable housing as much as possible, which is, as we know, very difficult to pull off. Mark, I mean, maybe I'm quibbling, which I um, have occasionally been known to do, but, you know, I think the community is the author of the plan, maybe more than the audience, and the audience is maybe external, but we're the author of the plan, right? Well, I think the RC, but no, I, I think, well, I think our neighbors are the author, not everyone is as active. So but again, yeah. yes, we are representing the neighborhood, but I think we have to look at the, the broader yeah. membership in the neighborhood. The, uh, than just who is active in this committee or on RCPC. Mm -hmm. It should, to some extent, has to be an educational document for those who live here as well. So that's all. But you're I, right, I, I think agree, the principal, principal audience is gonna be external. So. I'm curious, I'm gonna ask a somewhat, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the right word is, some kind of, some a somewhat, uh, tendentious question, which is, is anyone concerned that by by putting together a process to do this, we're just going to stir up so much debate and difference of opinion that it is, you know, it's just not going to go anywhere? Or do we think we can, I mean, consensus is in the eye of the beholder, we're never going to have agreement or consensus, but we'd want to be able to have something that wasn't just a 50-50 polarization or everyone not agreeing, right? Because that that would worry me if we went through that and that's all we got. Yeah, Myrna. I, I don't think that will happen. I think people are very strongly in favor of housing. And as Mark said, if it's something that, uh, you know, five to seven stories, not high rises, I think you'll get vast uh, a, a number of people who yeah. will support that. Ronnie, I you think, I think what happened at the Ridge oh. kind of demonstrates what she just said. Okay. Ronnie? I think I think that you need to go out to the community because if people see that RCPC has done this, because we 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 had the Rockridge area plan, which is what Mark was referring to. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a blueprint for it. And we extensively notified the community and kept them updated. You know, that was quite a while ago, but we, you know, I think if we don't do that <laughs> and people find yeah. out, there'll be a huge backlash against yeah. RCPC. Yeah. No so I think you need out. to go out yeah. and let people involve them and let them know. Well, yeah, I wasn't I, I wasn't suggesting that we wouldn't do that. I'm just curious. People think it would we'd end up with some kind of consensus, and it sounds like you do. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think you're going to wind up with consensus. I think there's as many opinions as there are neighbors. Who's okay. speaking? That's Na I'm Natalie. Natalie. Sorry, I don't have video on my Zoom. Um, okay. Other thoughts? Um, uh, well, this is Jason. Uh, you know, uh, from what I've seen, the main divisions in this group and in uh, RCPC active people seem to be about on housing, seem to be about 
the priority of, of the degree of priority of affordability uh and you know that broadly seem to be some division between uh all housing is good and a well we don't really want to build too much of just market rate housing uh points of view uh so i don't know whether you have a sense of that people have a sense of that either whether how much that's going to come into play in what we're talking about uh or whether it could be resolved at all but it, to me that's the most obvious like lack of consensus on the horizon okay i think you're right i agree with that sir. i think that's fair this is casey uh i think that this is definitely more an external document so lots of early community engagement to inform the document itself is necessary um but yeah, not everyone does have capacity to weigh in. So we want to make sure folks knew what we stood for after the fact, too. And so, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. You know, we can try to do this. We have to think about the ways that we get this input. We also think, have to, I think the, the two questions in my mind are, you know, how we go about putting together this plan and who's doing the work. I know that while I have a background in this kind of work, I absolutely positively do not have the time to, you know, be the main author or anything like that. And so this is going to have to be a group effort. Possibly we can find a little bit of money to pay someone if we want to go that route uh, to do it. Um, you know, so the one question is how to get it put together. And the next question is the way we do the outreach to make it effective. Um, so any thoughts on either of those two questions? Well, it seems like doing a town hall, you know, we do those on a regular basis. So that seems like the best way. And then advertising it through the Rockridge News and then, you know, any kind of email system that we have. Yeah, Casey and I were talking earlier about, are you all familiar with the term charrette, which is an overused term, uh, which just means a community workshop, basically, which is kind of hands on and, in you know, in person, probably and where you would have, you would let people sort of engage with this. Sometimes there's a series of exercises or tools that they're given. Usually you need someone who knows what they're doing to run one of those. And that could be where we put a little bit of funding uh, to find someone to run one of those. Ronnie? That's exactly how we did the Rockridge area plan. We had multiple meetings like that and we would have break into small groups and go through um, and talk about points at, this, Ronnie, at that particular meeting. What? What year that was? 95, 94. It was a long time ago that we did the Rockridge area plan. And those... we hired somebody from a professor at Berkeley, Ed something or another, hmm. and he ran it. And, uh... hmm. um, for those of you, and maybe it was just Ronnie who went through that process, was it worth it? I guess I'm asking you, Ronnie, because I think you're the only one. There were some things that people agreed on. The problem we had was there was a gentleman named Robert Pratt, who older people would know. And he um, he's somebody who tried to stuff the ballot boxes one time at the RCPC meeting. And so he just made it impossible to come to consensus. But other than him, I think that it was worthwhile. It was just, he was very problematic. Mm. He, he's he's not in the he's not around anymore so i think it would <laughs> that wouldn't be an issue but do we have another robert pratt <laughs> no no he 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 did a lot of stuff where he tried to take over elections with uh stuffing ballot boxes and he did a number of things like that and he also tried to take over these Rockridge area plant meetings. So he got, we, you know, got stopped and he, he hasn't appeared at all in any of our public meetings since then. I think we have to be careful how we frame it um, to me. And I guess there's a downside, there's, there's a double-edged sword. I would wanna not build it up too much as, as such a momentous thing that it becomes very emotional and everyone, you know, gets upset about it. On the other hand, if you don't build it up a little bit, then nobody will participate. 
So, you know, I mean, this is a neighborhood plan. It's not the city doing a plan. It will have no legal force, right? So I think we have to kind of frame it that way and try to keep it from being too, I don't know, you know, what the word is, but um, too emotional maybe is the right word. I don't know. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Glenn. Uh, the, the neighborhood plans that we did ourselves, you know, I, I say ourselves, but it was where a neighbor was a planning uh, professor or something like that at, at Berkeley and assigned, and assigned the Rockridge neighborhood as, yeah. a, as a school project. Yep. And the effect of it was, was really trying to create a better dialogue with Oakland planning and telling them, you know, showing them what we want and why. Mm -hmm. you know, and Rockridge has been a leader for neighborhood planning. The, the neighborhood commercial district, uh, after we established it here, became quite popular and went to immediately to Piedmont Avenue. And now it's in many other, you know, neighborhoods that have two lane commercial streets. <clears throat> so uh, it was really just communicating, you know, uh, planning ideas. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I, I'm it's worth curious. doing. It's definitely worth doing, but you want to, I think we overdid it in the Rockridge area plan. We did a, we did a survey of all the businesses. So we knew every single business. We, so you want to make it decide, are you going to do just housing, which is what I think you're doing. You're not going to touch, are you going to touch College Avenue because there could be housing there. You'll I have mean, to make those kinds of decisions. Is it biting off too much if it also looked at whether our College Avenue zoning needs any tweaks? Would that be too much of a separate subject? And by tweaks, I guess I'm thinking more about the red, the retail, the, the commercial, the commercial parts of the zoning, not the the residential parts we would address, I think, in this plan, but would we address the commercial pieces? And does there, you know, is there something that needs addressing? I don't, I don't remember, you know, I'd have to look, I, I gave my copy to Stu. He has, uh, I think a few copies of it, of that plan. We, we did, I remember one of the things we asked for was like gateways, like at Safeways saying that to notify people they were in Rockridge and we, one of the other things was like a, the left turn from college to Broadway, which got included in the um, old, the the Ridge plan, which you know they stopped doing phase two. So there were there, there were a few things that more immediately came out, but I don't remember. I'd have to look at it how much we did um, about business, but we definitely included some things in it about businesses. That being said, you know, it's hard to do much about businesses can be because the city doesn't impose anything on the commercial districts. So what are you going to ask for? What do you mean the city? What do you mean by the city doesn't impose anything? Well, in Berkeley, they try to go for a certain mix in the in the commercial districts, like along college. Oakland doesn't do that. I so. Mean it's difficult to legislate mixtures of uses through zoning, I will tell you. I'm not sure how successful those efforts are. San Francisco tries also. And but, you end up just saying we need, and then you end up, you know, times change and you can't change the zoning. And so you have too many restaurants or not enough restaurants and you can't change it and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I don't know if I would. So, yeah, so I don't know that there's much we could do about um, the commercial on college because we don't have very much say over it, given how Oakland does it, does their commercial districts. I'm not sure why we would want to. I feel like, you know, housing is the thing that most people are focused on right now. And I think it would be better to just keep it smaller. Yeah. I wonder if another audience for the plan is property owners I mean maybe maybe not who are sort of you know somehow might be encouraged to sell property that they're sitting on um I don't know if it matters I mean they're basically just waiting till they get the price they want 
Uh, I don't know if a plan matters for that, but it's another thought of an audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you could restrict it at first and see how much you, you know, how big it starts to get. And if there's bandwidth, you could add. Yeah, I mean, I think this can be, I don't think this, I think this can be a fairly modest effort and still be, be useful. I don't think it has to be super glossy with really expensive graphics and pictures. And those are the things that cost a lot of money, for example. Um, that's not really that necessary, if you ask me. Um, other thoughts? When we should start doing this? How long did it take, Ronnie, from start to finish? I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> I'd say six months at least to do this to to do this without taxing people's time too much. At least that much. It might have been a year. I think you should start this fall, and I think six months is sufficient. Do people know Starting point is the uh, um, the new zoning that's going to be proposed in the uh, housing element. Yeah. That just was sent out today. That that uh, that's a starting point. Oh, that was sent out today. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Well, I think that you know, in this group and on the board, those of you on the board, help you know, help me out here. We can start talking about how to put this together. Uh, what would be really interesting, because what what I thought. I really thought having Patrick as a guest was successful last month and it was a much bigger turnout, probably about twice as many people as we have now and everyone. I, and so the idea of having more guests in this group appeals to me. So I'm actually curious if it appeals to all of you and if we could find a guest who has gone through a process like that in their neighborhood more recently than the last time RCPC did it, that would be really interesting to me to have as a guest. Uh, nobody comes to mind right now. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the neighborhood groups around the Bay Area have done this, uh, but I don't know which ones. Um, if the city put out the um, phase two housing update, then maybe an article in the Rockridge News would be a good place to start. Yeah. Um, what it contains, because I did one quite a while ago on the um, the ones, the, the interim ones, but this is basically it's wide open again. They, they said they were opening up everything. I'm sorry, the phase two, what, what are you? The, when they did the, they, this is the, the housing update and they did a little bit that was just for the state, uh, you know, housing element just for the state. Yeah. But this is, and they said that you know, so they raised the heights on College Avenue to 50 feet or something like that. But then they said that what Scott said is that when it when this stuff in September was starting, that they were going to basically reopen everything having to do with housing. They just wanted to pass it because of the uh, when they put in the state stuff. That was several months ago that I wrote up. Okay. So I haven't looked at it, but you know, I think it should be written up what they're saying about the residential zoning in college, because we were supposed to be upzoned quite so significantly and what the uh, commercial was going to be. Yeah. All right. Other thoughts? Robin, hello. You joined us late. She's not talking. Um, just took me a second to unmute. Um, yes, I did. I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. I'm um, been thinking about. I, I'm going to throw a wrench in things, but um, I've, I've heard as a, a criticism of the RCPC board is that all they care about is housing. So if we and and, and also we have struggled with some uses on College Avenue that we've been asked to support or asked to comment on. So wouldn't it be 
So I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be helpful to have a guide for us or study somehow, or as part of this study, a guide for us as to which types of um, businesses we should yeah. support. I mean, we've had the the realtors wanting to come in and and and, and reluctant. We don't like really feel like that's the best thing for College Avenue. So, don't we want to? Well, I think you know. To me, that, that that's the biggest, the, the probably most important question about commercial ground floor commercial on College Avenue to me is we've generally the zoning at least attempts to restrict you know non uh, what do you want to call them uses that are not explicitly restaurants or, or stores you know not that are more like a realtor's office or a eyebrow place which is now in there or even the blood bank and the and I think the question for us is you know do we continue to really say no to those usually or do we want to rethink that because the demand for retail is lower and we don't want the spaces to be empty? And I think, exactly. I'm not sure. How, yeah, That's I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I think that is the question for College Avenue, re, for College Avenue ground floor retail commercial spaces. Well, um, that, that's what I mean. So while we're studying uses on, on the study, why not? look at that. I mean, I don't know what we're asking. I mean, are we going to ask the community what they want? Um, it, what, what is this planning document going to Yeah. Say? Someone was saying something. I thought. No? Natalie, did you say something? No? Um, yeah, I mean, the commercial thing is it's complicated, you know, it sort of depends on, you know, if you were really doing this, you would have some folks who would analyze the retail demand on college and look at how many spaces there were and tell you whether they thought those could ever be filled up with traditional retail or food and beverage. And if the answer came back, no, it's too much. Like I, my day job is in Union Square and we have become aware that there's too much space for retail in Union Square and it's never going to be all filled up. And we have to think a little differently, particularly about the Westfield Mall and whether it's ever going to be filled up again, right? And so like at a smaller scale, that's the question for us. Mm -hmm. I don't think College Avenue is nearly as over. Uh, I, do, I think the issue is much smaller for College Avenue than for Union Square. Uh, yeah. Union Square is, yeah. is it's way too much space. Uh, College Avenue maybe has a little too much space, if anything, for, uh, for retail and food and beverage. I think most of it will come back. Um, you know, but maybe not down here toward toward Broadway, maybe not. I just, you know, that my only caution would be the retail piece and the housing piece are like, maybe we do them as two different studies in two different years. I'm not sure it's, we should bite that off, both of those off in one planning effort. I get it. I just wanted to throw it out there. I, I have heard that we're focusing, the RCPC is focusing um, like 100% on housing and nothing else. So I thought this would be an opportunity for us to look at both. That's yeah. All. Well, I maybe, understand. maybe we say that we, you know, in 23, 24, we do housing and in 24, 25, we, we do College Avenue. That's one way to look at it. Because you know, I do I, believe that the community expects us to be looking at what's going on in College Avenue as well. Well, so I you think don't we're think... good partners with the district association on a lot of things that come up. I think there's not a whole lot we can do about those particular things. I mean, we talked about going after, weren't we going to contact some of the retailers of like Pharmaca to try to help fill that big gap? I mean, we've offered some support, Ken, with, with Chris yeah. Jackson. So yeah, we haven't done I, that. I don't think we're ignoring the district the district association at all. I think we should contribute to that. I, I think we should sit down with RDA and see what their vision is for attracting business in, in addition to serving existing businesses, because I'm not clear on what they how far they want to go on that. But I think they're great partners and would easily connect with us about that. Monty great. just um, had me come to speak at his congregation about the college and Claremont site. So He's, he's always looking to partner. 
Casey, let me ask you, we, we've met with Chris Jackson, who is the, the, you know, the staffer, but is there like a, I, I just don't, is there like a, um, who's the actual leadership of the district association? Like uh, an elected chair or something? Seth Walton was the president. Maybe it's Zach Walton. I don't know. Marna, do you know? Or, um, not him, no. Okay. I so like we should Seth meet with the them, president. not just Chris. Yeah, no, we had a we had a meeting within the last year. I think the last one was July, so just a year ago. Um, and we partnered really closely on the uh, Halloween parade, which is really beneficial to the merchants. Um, they prefer it to other events. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you curious. think inviting the RDA leadership to one of our meetings to discuss, um, kind of share what they're doing and what would be helpful to them would be a good step towards kind of identifying what we study further on that would be helpful to the community since the retailers and businesses are a big part of that? I mean, I will defer to others since I haven't been around long enough to really know those guys, but I think we should. I think we should have their leadership possibly at this meeting to talk about, you know, I mean, Chris is Chris and he doesn't like getting on Zooms and he's not, you know, he's he's the employee, not the leadership. It seems like maybe we should try to talk to the leadership too. And I also think it, it sounds like we need to sort of communicate to the community what we're doing with respect to any interactions we have with the commercial side of things. For example, what Casey was talking about, you know, volunteering to you know, find out about replacements for pharmaca, et cetera, mm -hmm. to show that we are actually paying attention to those issues. Right. J Jason, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to go back uh, uh, to the earlier uh, point about um, how we get uh, some community input and kind of notice and involvement um, prior to doing any study or plan so that people don't feel right left out and surprised. And I guess I was going to suggest and maybe urge maybe something broader than meetings uh, and and moderated input of the kind you mentioned. Um, and I don't know, it seems kind of crazy, but it's possible to just have like a, a bulletin board like section on the RCP, RCPC site somehow that people could just post unmoderated comments on. I'm sure you'd get a lot of unusable stuff, but it might just give people a, I mean, you could ask like three questions or something and say, please give your opinions about these three aspects of the housing, if that's what we're focusing on for the moment. Um, and, and then people won't feel, you know, like they just haven't been heard at all. Um, that has well, come up a lot. We've surveys in the past. Yeah, we'll top it on our website, but an easy, simple uh, program like Google Form. Um, and how is that distributed, Casey? I mean, in other words, I, I, in other words, I was we I was thinking of something our, that anybody who looked at the results. newspaper, right? We, the way we distribute results in the next um, after. No, we I, I meant uh, how do how do you enlist people to take we, the survey? We did a survey of what people wanted to see on the uh, Ridge site a while ago, and I think if I don't, yeah. I'm not mistaken, we put a QR code in the Rockridge News, and that if you pointed your phone at it, then it led you to a survey, and I it was pretty well attended. I had pretty well responded yeah. to. Okay. Yeah, we had it on the Rockridge.org website, like the first you know, entry so that it was easily accessible if you went there. So um, in, for those who don't like a QR code, we always put go to rockridge.org and it's pretty accessible from yeah. that. I mean, the only disadvantage or I don't know, disadvantage, the only difference between that really and uh, some kind of bulletin board like thing would be seeing other people's comments and being able right. to reply to them in some way or respond to them. You get more dialogue if you have a... a I, I've suggested similar things, you know, when I first came on the board and I, I think the the pushback and the concern has always been just, you know, you kind of, when you start one of those things, you just never yeah. know where but it's going to go and it can get pretty nasty. Well. What's deter, that, Casey? It can deter participation if you're not chiming in with the choir. I think Ronnie yeah. has yeah. a hand. Yeah, Ronnie. 
couple of things. Um, the RDA, the one of the big differences between RCPC and RDA is that because this is how it was explained to me is because whoever is coming in for a business might potentially be an RDA member. Right. They never make comments about businesses, whereas RCPC has been more of a push to stay within the zoning and look for a mix. It's usually like the individual owner of the property that will look. So, it, you know, uh, Sarah Wilson or one of the other owners would try for their own mixes, but RDA itself doesn't make any comments. So that's one the difference. In terms of a bulletin board, Jason, I'm the actually the currently doing the website and I absolutely refuse to moderate anything and look at it because it's a, I've done that before and it's so much work and such a headache that I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't touch it. But if it's the tough. Board, it's somebody tough in the to board wants those. to, that's fine. If you want, you know, if it's unmoderated, then you really run the risk of it getting really nasty. And if it's moderated, it's like a full-time job for someone to deal with that. So that's, I think that's why you don't see more of those. I think though that we, you know, can, um, we can um, find other, I thought the survey was pretty good, the one we already did. I think we can find ways to get a broader reach. I think we need to. You know, it's interesting, we're still very analog, right? You know, and there has, there's some advantages to that. How many, the, I forget how many copies of the Rockridge News go out every month, but a lot. And people do look at it. So, other thoughts? Um, yeah, go ahead, Margaret. Yeah, so um, one of the reasons I'm attending tonight is it seems like it's the right time to really look at how do we get more realistic citizen participation in this area on issues like housing and safety and climate and what do we do about that? Mm -hmm. And that's an area that in a past life I was involved with is citizen participation and, and uh, approaches to it. So I'm just listening tonight and I wanna go back and listen to your presentation, the uh, last month's um recording mm -hmm. that's available but there's some really interesting ways like one one initiative where you get one or two dozen randomly selected citizens and they're given a lot of information and they're giving processes and this takes place over it can be over a weekend over two weeks that they really listen to each other about a public issue in a way that leads them to shared insights and perspectives on the issues to be addressed. And there, I mean, I have friends who are doing that in Austria, they're doing it in Taiwan, they're doing it in London, that I've decided it's time for me to get re-engaged and start looking at these things. And that Rockridge feels like such an amazing, intelligent, engaged uh, community. So I'm just, throwing that out there without it. And I'm just listening tonight, but I'm um, just. Well, please keep in touch with us. I mean, we need not only ideas, but people who have the time to help us actually execute those ideas. Uh, and I, I've also personally just felt like we should be able to reach out to a broader group of people. And then when you start thinking about how to do it, no one really knows exactly how to do it. And, and so that that's always been the challenge. And that's and, and part of my intent, because I do now have time, is to re-engage with my global folks on how they're doing it today and how what's working and what's not working. So okay. I'm um we shall see. Okay. Well I, I love the, the conversation tonight feels very synchronistic with the with my energy and what's possible. So I will stay engaged and we'll see what happens. Are you on the, the mailing list that I have to send out to notify of these meetings or how did you find out about it? Um, I think I get them through our neighborhood. I'm on Manor Crest and there's um, um, three streets here that send out a lot of emails about okay. what's going on. Okay, yeah, I'll make sure maybe um, 
I don't know if you have my email or or um, send me your make sure I have your email so it gets added. Okay. Um, Myrna. Um, a survey can be a very effective. Uh, the one we started, that was started and then shared with panel and RCPC ended up with 5,400 people participating. That's huge. Was that the, the Ridge survey? Was that the one that, did we get that yeah. many people? Yeah. That was, wait, was that a petition or a survey? Um, anyone remember? Well, it was, it was a petition, uh, yeah. uh, a pose, but it was built on the earlier survey, which okay. also had a lot of people. So it's not that hard to re reach people, I, mean, I think. Well, it was, yeah, it was all three of our neighborhoods who worked together on that um, coalition. Right. And that framing the issue is going to be the, the, the difficult part, but it can be framed in a way you send it out to Uber's mailing list. I don't know if we want panel at this time to participate or not, but uh, certainly RCPC's mailing list and, our, and the newsletter, you just hit a lot of people. That's a lot of people to, re, to respond to a petition. Mm -hmm. um, Ursula. Um, yeah, I just want to um, chime in a little bit. I am mostly just listening because I feel very new to um, the group and I, I don't have a strong sense of RCPC's history. So I mostly just have questions. Um, but in terms of, of furnishing a forum for people um, to be involved, I, I think a survey is, is a good idea and just as a as a as a point of um, of consideration, people respond to surveys at much higher rates if there's some small possibility of getting a, like a <laughs> prize or a reward, which is um, you know just a human thing. Yeah, that's um, a good idea. Like free dinner at Acre or something like that. Wow. Well, that would be yeah. Right. That would that would get a lot of involvement. I mean, we we <laughs> certainly can afford. We can afford if they don't give it. Maybe they'll contribute it, but we have enough money RCPC to actually pay for that. So we could do something like that. Do you mean like a raffle for that as opposed to every single person who does? Oh, no, not every single no, person. It's, okay. it's, you, yeah. We will, one one respondent yeah. will, yeah. 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 Um, uh, so, and then the another question is about the funding of RCPC um, because I just have no idea. And um, I guess I my other questions are mostly about uh, the specific plan itself, because I haven't read one in a long time. And I'm trying to, I, I'm wondering about how pres prescriptive a specific plan actually is. Uh, yeah. I want to be clear, you know, we don't have the resources to do anything approaching what is, what would be a legal specific plan. I mean, they would cost probably cost a million dollars or more for the, the, for the city to do one, even for a small area like Rock Ridge. We're talking about, we shouldn't use that term because it has a specific definition in law that isn't what we're doing. Uh, a specific plan is like, is legally binding. It has lots of studies. It has environmental review. Um, we're talking about something much more uh, informal and high level than that. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly it is, I, I'm not sure. That is yet to be determined. Yeah. Um, okay. And and then in terms of another question I have is about who the partners of RCPC are. Who do, who do we like to you know work with and talk to? And um, yeah, who who else can we pull in? Those Thoughts on that from the group. Thoughts. Any thoughts? I mean, I think it's it may not be exactly what you're asking, but one um, one thing that's true of Rockridge is that it has a huge number of professionals with expertise in these areas living in it: architects, planners, engineers, transportation people, uh, lawyers, housing developers. You know, so that pulling that in would you know if we could figure out a way to pull some of those folks in, that would make it a lot richer. But you know, you you also want to do that. You don't want to, you don't want the average neighbor who doesn't have one of those expertises to figure that they're like not wanted because they're not an expert. So like it's a balance. Yeah. 
I mean, there are other groups surrounding us. UBA, the Upper Broadway Association, is that right? That's what UBA is? Advocates. Upper Broadway Advocates. There's Panel, which is a little far away. That's Piedmont Piedmont. Avenue. What's that? That's Piedmont Avenue. Piedmont Avenue. There's probably something that I don't know the name of for Elmwood and that side of things. Yeah, uh, and Ursula, I just wanted to chime in that because the organization has been around for 40, nearly 40 years, um, they have, I think, a lot of credibility with people in the city. They, they recognize RCPC's acronym, maybe not what all the letters stand for, but uh, that it's for Rockridge in the neighborhood. So um, I think when we put information out there, we submit something to the city, like we're doing on the college in Claremont um, vacant triangle site fighting um, the shell closure of the case with Alameda County Office of Environmental Health. Sorry to add that plug in there, but I did, and I hope you've all signed the petition. Um, um, but to that end, I think we just have a lot of influence with the city um, and beyond because of, we've been around a long time advocating for things, and they know we speak for a broader um, set of the neighborhood. I don't think everyone knows we're formally elected by the neighbors, but um, I think we have a, a good influence around the city. And also, just so you know, like compared to most neighborhood groups, we we actually have more resources. You know, the, the Rockridge News generates income, and that is what pays for the operations of RCPC. Generates income from advertising, which pays for the operations of RCPC and and um, and, and and the newsletter. And we have some other money that we've collected over the years from legal settlements and things like that. That's sitting in in the bank. Uh, which you know the board has responsibility for determining the use of, and I think since I've been on the board, we spent almost none of that because I think we're always very very cautious about spending that nest egg, which is probably never going to fill up again once we spend it. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think we'd be open to spending a little bit of it to pay to make our process certainly to buy two free dinners at Acre. We could do that. That's two hundred bucks or whatever. But um, you know, to pay to make a process work well. Um, Thank you, Ken and Casey. That was really yeah. helpful. Glenn, did you have your hand up? I can't tell if it's, you're just resting your hand or you want to speak. Did you? Yeah, want to speak? I, yeah I, I have a question. <clears throat> Do you know where the uh, zoning update is at this point? Uh, the last time I looked into it, it was going to be voted on in June or July. And I don't think that's happening. Yeah, I should know, but I confess I am I am not tracking it. Uh, do we still have Ronnie here? Or did she leave? Ronnie, are you tracking it? I have been in Europe. I've been in New York, LA, and I'm going to hike the Tour de Mont Blanc. So I've been training. Well, so I have not been following it. It's nice line. to have an academic schedule. Yeah. Mark? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, I thought I would just, you know, we're going to end soon, I think. Yeah. But we should pick up on some of Patrick Kennedy's points. I thought, he, you know, one of my objectives was actually to get him specifically interested. Not yeah. that we would necessarily agree with whatever, you know, all that he would want to do. But I think, you know, in terms of thinking about things, we do want to be active on continuing projects as you know, Casey's been heading up on the triangle of Claremont and College to make sure that that site is, is brought up to standards for some development in the near future and not way in the future because Shell has gotten off the hook. And uh, I, I think we maybe want to follow up uh, with Patrick. One of the sites I think he was most interested in was the old uh, Red, you know, yep. Red Cross site across from Safeway. And that really piqued his interest. It also seems that that triangular lot, although I don't think it's sufficient, we talked about it for housing alone, uh, that's the, the owners are supposed to be willing to sell that site. We do, uh, I, I don't know, you know, where things currently stand on the the, Col uh, the California College of Arts site. That project seems it's, to be uh, stalled. We no, don't want to forget the Ridge site. So, you yes. know, while we're doing some I think it's a good idea to have some kind of updated area plan ideas. We do have these other projects that maybe uh, we want to push along in different ways. 
uh, because yeah, I, to... I think our active interest uh, in getting something going on housing uh, may, may be beneficial, may be helpful. I'm happy to circle back with Patrick. I was thinking about doing that when I was reviewing the, the video from last time. Um, and also with the folks, the TRC folks who control the Ridge site. I mean, the good news there is I think most of you know by now is the the zoning updates coming coming uh, along from the city will prevent the Ridge site from being anything except housing. So we won't have to fight it again because the zoning is just gonna say that you can't do it. Um, but that doesn't mean it's going to be housing. That's a bigger lift because as we know, the owner has determined no housing there. So we can follow up on that too. Um, you know, a lot of it, unfortunately, Mark, is, I just, you know, gotten used to this over the years, is, you know, dependent on the actions of private actors who we can't control or influence, uh, in this case, the owners of all that land. So, you know, we just have to keep pushing as much as we can. Well, the, 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 ultimately, the way we're going to push them is going to have to be enlisting the city and city officials and, and staff. So I, I think it's it, it's hard, you know, things can, it's very hard to stay on top of all these things. So I think we may want to think about some specific assignments of people yeah. to do some follow-ups. You don't have to do everything yourself. No, but I, that I in fact we don't, can't. We don't lose, I know you can't, yeah. but we don't lose track of these things and that, you know, months wind up going by very sure. quickly. I appreciate that. And I think we should, as the board, I think we should take that up. Um, the one thing I would say kind of like, to kind of meld what your point is, which is to keep pushing on the various fronts that you mentioned, which I agree with. Part of the way you push in the longer term is by doing this plan. So it's it's really both. I mean, the plan is an umbrella way of pushing all of that, as well as calling the, you know, interacting with the individual owners. And, and I mean, I would love it if Patrick would buy one of those sites. You know, all I could <laughs> do is ask him if he is interested. You know, we can't really make him... I mean, the, the decision process that someone like him goes through is pretty complicated and, you know, he's not really going to be influenced by us begging him to do it. No, no, I don't think it's, I think you're right. I'm not proposing these things. I don't want us to forget that. In fact, I think Patrick himself did perk up seeing that our interest was more aligned with his interest. And I think it does matter. Oh, yeah. Actually, with him particularly, mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I, I think you, you still have to be somewhat wary in terms of what he might be proposing. And there's still going to be some, there can be some issues. But I think uh, knowing that Rockridge is not against yeah. developing some significant housing was a very, it's a very, going to be a very important factor in his mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Myrna, you're, you still have your hand up or is that from before? No, that's new. Uh, it, just going back to how do you get community involvement, people mentioned the little local neighborhood groups, you know, just a few blocks here and there, and there are a lot of them and they should be pulled into this. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to start to wrap up unless people have more to say. And I think um, for those of you who are on the board and just so everyone knows, Star, Casey, Mark and I, am I missing anyone though? No. Star Casey, Mark and I are on the board and we have a meeting. I oh, and Robin, sorry, Robin, you came late. Um, we have a meeting next week, Casey, right? Are we having that meeting? That's right. Yeah, so we'll 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 take up at the, you know, uh, all these things at the board and see if we can come back with a little bit of a direction that can be reported back to this meeting next month. And I also wanna look for some more good guests because I think that's also a good use of this group, of this meeting. Ken, if you send me that video, I'll tr I'll post it. Okay, do we still have the YouTube channel? We do. Um, okay. I, and I'm one of the people with access and I tried to give Casey access and it didn't work when okay. I tried it. So I can try it again. Okay. But you know, I can always just put it right on the website. Oh, it's you can? It's pretty easy. Oh, yeah. I thought it needed to go on YouTube first or something. No. no. Well, then, okay. But, I mean, I can just, we can always put videos on there, but I'll okay. I'll try to get it on YouTube. So, There's so no, we have uh, it all together. Ronnie, we don't have like a space constraint. It's like a big, it's a big file, right? 
Yeah, and, and I do a lot of video stuff. I can always cut it down so it's not okay. so big. You know, lower the resolution. Uh, okay. If we okay, need cool. to, because that's what yeah, that's you what YouTube do does. I mean. Yeah. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a Zoom file, so I assume you know how to deal with that. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to forward you. Casey forwarded it to me. I'm going to forward it to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, very much. We're advancing this discussion, and we will see you next uh, month. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you all for what you do. Thank, thank you. you. It's in the chat box there. Thank you. Casey, if there's anything you want me to do, you got to do it before next Wednesday when I go to France. Okay. Okay. Nothing on Website. my but I'm happy to remind Ken to get you this piece. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye.